Hello and welcome to my channel, Real Life Matters with Sandra. Today I've got my ladies again from the uh, book club with me and I would ask them to introduce themselves in a minute. But before we, they do that, uh, I just want to say that we'll continue with the series on um, Seven Deadly Scenes and today we're doing Sloth. Good afternoon, my name is Flo, I've known Sandra a very long time. I really enjoy being part of the book club. So today we're going to discuss Sloth. Hi, I'm Pauline, thanks for inviting us back again and looking forward to getting everyone's views on Sloth <laughs> and their definition. Mm, Patricia? Hi, I'm Patricia. Um, being a member of the big book club has been one of knowledge, gaining knowledge and information and this is really just another extension of that. That is fantastic. Thank you. We do have fun, don't we? Uh, we in do. our book club. So um, this is, as you said, Patricia, an extension of that. So let's start today then, of, you know, just talking briefly about what we know sloth to mean to us, because obviously everyone have, would have a different view of it. So if I start with Flo, what, what's your view on, on sloth, the topic? To me, sloth, sloth or sloth, or whichever way you pronounce it, I think it's a state of mind. We all have those days where, I don't know, you call them sheep days. And if you're someone like me who likes to procrastinate or there's something you know you should do that you don't do, that's sloth. I know people think it's laziness, but I just think it's a state of mind. If it's something that you know to me. There's certain things like I need to do. There's certain areas in my house that I should really contend with. Let me find something else. I'll do it tomorrow. And tomorrow never comes. Very interesting. And Pauline? Yeah. Sloth is just laziness and it restricts progress in any area of your life. Okay, thank you for your view on that. And Patricia? For me, sloth is laziness or a lack of effort. Um, it's You sit around maybe on a couch all day and you don't make an effort to be productive when you've got the ability to do that. Um, it's just really... Um, an indifference, a negligence, uh, a disinclination of, of maybe hard work. That's how I see it. And why do you think, so I'm, I'm, I'm throwing this out to all three of you, uh, why do you think that is the case? Because obviously not, people are not born to be lazy. We're not created to be lazy. We're created actually to be quite active. Uh, as, as, as active um, human beings. So for me, I don't think it's just a simple thing as saying uh, somebody is lazy because they want to be lazy. There is obviously going to be some underlining uh, reasons behind that. Not necessarily an issue, but a reason. So what, 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 do, you, what do you take of that? As I originally said, I think it's where you are in a particular period in time. That's why I said it's your mental state. Certain things trigger, to me, trigger that action. You just fed up, you could be depressed. Anything can happen to make you go in that direction. As you said, people are not born to be lazy, but some people just don't have the guts to do certain things. Does that make them, does that make them lazy? Maybe not. Maybe they just don't have the confidence to carry out certain actions. Okay. Not having the confidence I... to carry out some actions. Okay. So, Patricia, you wanted to come in. Yeah, motivation. Motivation is one of the big key issues here, where it depends on who you've got around in your life. It depends on how important things are to you. And you can just kind of like put things off for the next day because you just, you think, you know, you can do, do it another day. We all do it. We procrastinate on things sometimes because we think, oh, well, we'll do it tomorrow. We'll put it off till tomorrow. And sometimes tomorrow never comes. But I think when we're talking about sloth, it's, it's a very different thing. I think sloth is just pure laziness. It's laziness um, with a lack of effort. And for us, um, not having to, not having to kind of do something to kind of represent ourselves. 
we kind of feel as if you know oh it might be done by somebody else somebody else could do it you know um just leave it for somebody else to do but i think when you look at the definition of sloth it, it just just basically says laziness Mm-hmm. You know, so laziness is something that we can all be guilty of, but you know, it depends on what it is we want to achieve in our lives, how we are motivated to achieve those things in our lives, whether we have the means to achieve those things in our lives. Um, so it's on different elements, really, and what laziness is. Mm. I still don't think it's laziness. I really don't. Let's let's hear from Pauline. Pauline, what do you think? I know you said earlier on that it's pure laziness. Um, yeah, well, the, the dictionary definition of sloth is laziness. Mm-hmm. So it can be, it, you can come to that point in your life through many factors. It could be just not being motivated, not being enthusiastic, not ha- suffering from anxiety, suffering from depression. Do you know what I mean? That causes you to be slothful. But then one person's idea of slothfulness is different to another's. Mm-hmm. That's true because, for example, um, you know, I, I know you, you you probably know, and I'm sure I've said it before. I don't like cooking. I really don't like cooking. I know, as as a woman, you know, this ideology that women should be in the kitchen and all of that, and that's another for another day that topic. So let's go down that route right now. Uh, I think I think it's lost on me basically because I don't like cooking at all. So if I, I would get out of it, slothful. I wouldn't say that was being slothful. Okay, because no, that's what I wanted to. I wanted to no, be sure. I'm... Sorry, Pauline, for speaking over you. I wanted to be sure that we're very clear when we when we say when when we're talking about sloth, what we actually mean by that. Because sometimes, from time to time, we we can all be lazy to do certain things. That's not what we're seeing here. As I said, I still think it's a state of mind. It's having the will. If you haven't got the will to do something, then I think that's when slothness comes into being. You Give know us you an example. Give us an example, okay. Flo. Right. I know that I've got the kitchen to sort out. The washing up's there to be done. But I won't do it because I just don't fancy doing it today. I just don't, I just cannot get my head around it. I know I've got to do the cooker, do the oven, everything, but I just don't feel like doing it. It's it's a state of feeling. I've got, I haven't got the wherewithal to do it. I won't deal with it today, but tomorrow I could wake up, right, bang on, let's just get on with it. So that's why I say it's a state of mind. If you're like, you um, mentioned anxiety and depression, I think slothness, can lead to anxiety and depression or anxiety and depression the other way around lead to mm. it, it depends as i said i still say it's a state of mind a state of being where you state are yeah. state of being that's right yeah it, it can be a state of mind but i think you know the noun is habitual disinclination of on ex- of exertion so basically you know that you need to do something but you choose not to do it and it's not just the fact that you know you're making up excuses that you can't do it or you can't do it today you can't do it tomorrow it's the continuation of that that sloth is it's a continuation of kind of talking yourself out of certain things uh, because you know at the end of the day you can do it another day and you can do it another day but it's the laziness it's the lack of effort that sloth is all about so yeah. is laziness it, so what i'm hearing now is that Yes, sloth is laziness, and uh, laziness is when, you know, it's a state of mind and you choose to do something or not to do something on a particular day or, or not. But is that is that a problem? Yeah, well, because, for some people, it, because it yeah. inhibits progress in your life. That's what it does. It restricts progression in your own life and in your own state of mind. You're just, you, you end up being stuck at a certain place. That's why I said earlier, it's about courage and conviction. If you haven't got the courage, you're not going to carry out a certain task. Does that make you lazy? No, I don't think so. But well, that's where sloth starts, because you have to find the willpower. I think it's an emotional state. You have to find the willpower in order to carry out this task. And when you haven't got it, as I said, I, that's what I, that's how I envision it. I don't think it's like, yeah, I think there is an element of laziness, but 
if you just don't have the confidence, does that make you lazy? No. No, I don't think, you know, I don't think well, it's about confidence. I just think, you know, like you touched on Remy, sometimes you look at it and you've got the bowl of washing up to do and you sort of think, I'll, I'll leave it till tomorrow. Is that, can you define that as sloth? It's not really, you're just delaying it. But it's, if it goes on for a long period of time and you, you, you have, you don't bother to do it over a week's period, then you have to look at yourself and sort of think, what am I doing here? So Patricia, what's your view? You're trying to come in there. I think sloth is an indifference, really. You have an indifference to things, whether you achieve it today or whether you achieve it next year or the following year. It's an indifferent to the fact that you need to do something, you know, um, and, and maybe you don't give yourself a time limit. Although you want to get it done and you don't do it, then I think there is an indifference there. There is a, 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 an element of laziness. That's how I see it. I mean, for instance, I've got um, a, an application form that I need to complete. I know it's important that I need to, that I complete that, that application, but I've put it off for three weeks. Mm, Why? Because lovely. I, you know, I can't be bothered. Yes, because I can't be bothered to sit down and do it. It's not going to take me that long, but it's just getting my mind into the right frame to kind of sit down and do it. I keep making excuses. Oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it, you know, and tomorrow hasn't so far, hasn't come. So I'm Sorry. still procrastinating. Sorry. Well, that's the difference. But what about someone else who has that same application form? Um, they don't know where to start. They don't feel they have qualifications or the experience to do it. So they, they don't look at it. They don't do it either. Is that slothfulness? Is that laziness? Yeah, because you can, you can literally, if you don't know where to start, then you ask and you find something. You know, I, it's not, I, you know, it's just literally, I'm feeling lazy. I don't want to sit down and do it because I just think, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You know, it hasn't come. Tomorrow hasn't come. And I know it's important because if, if I want to take that step in my life by applying for another job, you know, I know it's all down to me. Why aren't I doing it? So because, maybe I that... can't get because I can't get motivated to do it. And it's not the fact that I don't know how to do it. I do. I just... I just put it off. Mm. It sounds as if there is some kind of uh, timing issue here as well. So we keep talking about do it now or do it tomorrow and tomorrow never comes. And there is a deadline to make for an application and one is not motivated to do it. So are we tying ourselves down because of time? Does it matter when it's done, for as long as it's done? I know the application you talk about, Patricia, has a deadline. So the question is, if if it didn't have a deadline, would you still do it? Is the deadline inhibiting you from making that progress? Is deadline necessary in life anyway? Is time necessary? Time, time is absolutely vital. But I think for me, it's more about well, I can take the stress off myself by doing it now, or I can leave it till the night before and thinking, oh, I've got to do it the night before, you know. And of course, then I'm stressed up because I want to get it done and I don't, I want to meet the deadline. And why haven't I done it? Because I've been lazy. Because I had no excuse. I could have done it, but I haven't done it. And I think time is an important factor because if we keep putting things off, they just build up in the end. As, as um, Patricia rightly pointed out, you keep putting it off and then you have to panic if there is a deadline you start suddenly panicking something you could have done when i used to study that's why i used to get a deadline you've got to do this assignment and it's got to be in we're in say september it's got to be in by the end of october yeah right student life run around run around enjoy oh sugar friday then you're looking for extensions then you get an extension and then you still put it off that is slow and i was just slow student I know that and, and that, that can lead to poor go on that can lead to poor output couldn't it definitely you know, because you haven't given it your best you haven't put good quality time and effort into it and could lead to really poor what piece of work or piece of application yeah, and then I, I only have myself to blame but you know exactly. you can just look around you you can just I mean 
if you just take life in itself, you know, mm. you get some people who achieve a huge amount in their lives because they work mm. sun up, sun down, because they've got, you know, targets and goals and they want to achieve these things in their lives before their life comes to an end. And then you have the others who, you know, they kind of coast through life because they feel, well, you know, I'm doing okay, Jack, you know. Um, mm. So then you have the, 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 the two variations there. So somewhere in between is where we should be really. We shouldn't overwork ourselves. You know, we shouldn't kind of um, over overachieve in, in certain things because we push ourselves to the limit where we get so stressed that, and we're not enjoying the things that we are actually achieving. And then sometimes, you know, you just, you know you can achieve it. You want to achieve, you got the means to achieve it, but you still want to achieve it. Me, in different. Mm. Am I so, still there? Okay. Yeah, you, you were cutting in and out there. So, yeah. so really, I think the, the essence of what you're saying is, it's not about capability. You know, it's not that I can't I can't do it because I don't have the know-how. We talked about if you don't have the know-how, you ask people who might be able to help you fill in an application or something like that, or you know, ask for an extension, as you said, Flo, uh, so that you can do more research in the library and, and be able to come up with something <laughs> really good out of that. Mm. So it's not any of those. It's just pure laziness. Don't want to get up. Don't want to do anything. Don't have the the motivation to do anything, uh, just leave me here uh, and, and, and let me be myself, you know. So in, in cases like that, can we, and, and, and I'm not an expert at all whatsoever, and I'm not sure any of us can claim to be experts on this, can this be clinically regarded as depression or is it not? No. That no, it's not depression. No, not. I think what our, if you look at, um, I think what is what our generation before us will call idleness. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It's literally, you know, the fact that we're not doing and we can do. Yes. So it's pure idleness. Yeah. And is it the, because we see people around us that have similar thinking? Or is it because we just, we rely on other people to to support us because obviously if one is idle right if one is idle how do they feed how do they how do they manage in life basically they're going to have to rely on people not necessarily they do depends well, where you are some people do mm -hmm. some okay, people so. do don't they the thing is you know if you have a support network and you don't feel like you want to do anything, you, you're going to rely on them, especially mm -hmm. if they're there to support you. That's but some funny. people, not necessarily do you rely on others. I mean, you know, you just coast through life. You just have enough. You don't feel like you need to achieve anything extra, you know, it's because it's too much of an effort to do so. Um, just look at, you know, um, so just look at it from a wider perspective. So we have, you know, with when the EU opened up and you have lots of people coming into the country, um, a lot of them came in to work, to do the work that we didn't want to do. You know, am I, can you hear me? I can't really. We can, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. They, they come into the country to do the work that some of us didn't want to do because we're too lazy to do it, you know? Um, they actually came into work. They want to work, they want to achieve because they weren't able to do that in their own countries, you know? So to us, I mean, it's laziness, it's idleness, you know? We no. have a system where we don't have to do too much because mm -hmm. if we don't do anything, we still get benefits. So there's still another means of, you know, supporting yourself because the government will do so. And then you have, you know, where some countries don't have that luxury. So, you know, a lot of them have come here to work to make their lives better. Whereas we have opportunities here sometimes and we don't take those opportunities here because it's, it's, right, in, it's right in our laps. We don't do it. We just don't do it. Well then, okay, yeah, I agree with that. If the system spoils you and gives you an opportunity to feel special, that I don't need to do that or I can put down on those jobs. I see where you call it laziness. I do believe that then I could, I could, I could call that so. I don't want to do that. I'm better than that. I don't feel like, I know I can do it, but I don't want to do it. It's not for me. So yeah, I believe that's so. So how, how can one get out of 
that rot because that, that's what I'll call that um, because obviously that's not what people want to do deep down themselves but they just cannot get that motivation they don't know where to pull that motivation from you know so what can they what can they do how can how can we how can we best support people like that you know if we if we know about them change systems sometimes you have to be cruel to be kind and you have to change mm -hmm. systems in a way that will reflect you know, a different way of, of a different approach, a different way of doing things. Um, and also things like self-esteem and, you know, um, confidence all play a factor in sometimes when people don't feel like they can achieve certain things in their lives. But there is a way, there is a way that you, you know, you're trying to change your thinking, the, your approach, you know, and, and you surround yourself with people who can actually try and motivate you, you know. Um, like they say, when you go to university and you get the university experience, that's like being around other people who you know can achieve higher things and you kind of follow that kind of pathway. And sometimes you don't, sometimes you do. Um, I can only speak for myself. When I went to university, I surrounded myself with people who were, who had achieved things and who I knew that, you know, could help me grow because that was, that's the idea of university as far as I know. Um, and, you know, um, I was able then to, to come away with a really good degree and I felt like I had actually achieved something. But um, it shouldn't stop there. The thing is, you know, the platform is, is a blank as far as I'm concerned. And you can go on to achieve as much as you can. But of course, you need to have the mindset. You need to have, you know, the value in yourself. You need to look at, you know, your self-esteem and all the other things around that's really important that helps you to, to kind of progress in your life. Um, so it's not all laziness, it's, it's just sometimes you just don't have the means or, or the right motivation or the right systems in place to help you kind of, you know, make you feel as if you have to actually move on to that next phase in your life. You know what, in this current state, Corona, our good friend Corona has come in and stamped all over that. You've got the university graduates that have gone for this um, university experience, now they're all locked up demotivated so are yes. we gonna say when these people have got no self-esteem and they you know what gets them out of bed a lot of people you've been working for 10 15 years mm. queen corona comes along now you haven't got a job so yeah. are we are we going to become a country full of slows because what are we getting out of bed for there's nothing there yeah so are we all but the lazy? systems need to change we have to work within the restraints that we have and sometimes that's really hard yeah but then again isn't isn't it about taking small steps you know uh, that's what I was and say, take small steps yeah come in pauline on that no that's what i was going to say it's about the best way you can help people is encourage them to take small steps um and understanding have an understanding as to what they want to attain if anything some yeah. people might not some people might just be happy coasting along mm. you know so is it slothful i don't know i don't know it's all about being mo being motivated in life mm. you know so, yeah at the outset i said life, it's... But I, I don't know it's a, it's a difficult one because it's based on every individual circumstances mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and mindset yeah i think also we learn from examples don't we um you know um from from systems and from our, ourselves or our own environment from the people who surround ourselves with um we learn from examples when we see somebody achieve something it sometimes motivates us to try and achieve the things that we want not the things that they've achieved but sometimes it kind of motivates you to kind of the things that you put down in the corner which you never really thought about it might help you to think about that and to kind of reinvent yourself redefine yourself you know in certain ways and sometimes you know that's really all you need all you might need some other people they're going to need a lot more because of their own circumstances so it's not it's not just one side of the coin you know there's many little things many different things that will motivate people to kind of progress and to move on and to kind of get get ahead so is it about, you know, at work they talk a lot about mentoring and that. And then maybe in churches you talk about people coming alongside you to encourage you and they spot that you're, you're not doing great 
and um, they know you and they just put their arms around you and kind of support you through that. Is it those kind of things that that would help someone get out of that rut? You know, people have been there to encourage them, to signpost them to things, to, to mentor them, to, you know, to be their cheerleaders, you know, if you like. You know, with this COVID situation, it's taught a lot of people to be a lot kinder because you find this mentoring or this buddy system, a sense of not being alone, mm -hmm. camaraderie. I think it all helps. I do think it all really does help. But if someone is naturally a pessimist, it's going to take a lot of work. Yeah, and it goes back to what you said, Flo, about mindset. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to be complacent about things um, and sometimes it just takes that little motivation to kind of move you from, from A to B. Mm. And I think it's, it's, it's easy to, to say, um, oh, someone should just get over it um, or, or pull, them, pull themselves together or, or, or things like that. But if you say, if you say, if you say mind, Thing, it's very difficult you know how do you how do you switch that mind on to the right thing for example to say I need to get up I need to brush my teeth I need to get dressed I need to get out of the house I need to do very small things in life and and it's really having someone alongside them to kind of support and encourage them I think that is very important to me anyway. I personally, if I don't have to do something, I don't do it. Mm. I'm not as highly motivated as I used to be. Um, I still have dreams and goals and stuff, but I'm not getting up every day and saying, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. If I feel, if there's nothing that I need to do that day, then I will relax myself. I will not do things just for the sake of doing something. I won't be going about busying myself. Yeah. Yeah. I understand what you're saying, Pauline, but is, isn't it about setting goals? You know, setting what? goals for yourself. For me, you know, every day I have a to-do list of things that I need to do. And my, my daughter, one of my daughters is always reminding me, Mom, have you ticked off that list? Have you done it? Have you done it? You know, so that kind of encourages me to actually do do it. But no, I find I that having a... Like that. Sorry? I couldn't live like that. Mm. I couldn't live like that. But Why? then everyone's different. Yeah, In my exactly. mindset, I've got to... Yeah, you do the daily basic things and stuff, but I won't go out and make a list of things that I need to do. Mm. You know, yeah. right now I've got my my house to decorate from time, you know, and I've been slothful, yeah, because I haven't been motivated to go out there and get what I need to do. Mm. And I know it would be better for me at some point when I do it, but one day I'll just get a bolt of lightning and do it. I'm so, with you, Pauline. Yeah. So I'm you're falling all the way. Yeah. Right. So you're waiting for that light bulb moment. Mm. What, what if it doesn't come? Then it don't get done. Okay. <laughs> That's right. That's it's, not my it's not my interest. It's not my priority. My my priority is all about personal development. Me, growth, personal growth. See, about me. Yeah, it's all about. Yeah, I know it sounds selfish, but it's all about. Me. And if I don't feel to do something, I'm not going to do it, no matter what anybody says. Because I'll go through the motions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what I'm not going to do. I'll do it when I'm ready. And if it never happens, then I was never ready. So and that's it. right. And why should we be all running in the same direction? We shouldn't. No. I think I think one of the points that Remy's just made there is the fact that when she when she's ready to do it, she will do it. She'll exactly. you know she she has. That. Uh, and sometimes it's that it's that motivation um, that sometimes it just kind of lay you know it's it's a bit lethargy it just lays for a while until something happens or you kind of wake up with that kind of energy and you think right i'm gonna do it today you know and then you get it sometimes you just feel like you just you know it's, it's like a time thing mm. sometimes yeah. the time just isn't right yeah. and sometimes i'd rather be doing something else that's much more enthusiastic and motivating than thinking about that do you know what i mean so 
Well, so stick what, with that. It works yeah. for me. Yeah. So what we're saying basically is that we all kind of have a slothful uh, behavior in us, if you like. Um, mm-hmm. But it's, it's the thing that we manage on a daily basis and it's the thing that we're mindful of and, and work at, you know, but we're not saying that, we're not condoning laziness and saying, oh yeah, just do whatever you want to do whenever you want to do it. Or are we? No, I understand what slothfulness is and it's lazy and I'm mindful and I understand what it can, what, what the negative um, aspects of it is and yeah, need to look at it and need to, yeah, from this conversation there are aspects of my life that I know I need to change. But like Remy says, one day you'll get to it. Mm. I don't think on on any level we should condone um, or say that we condone um, laziness or softness because it depends on where we are in our lives and it depends on you know opportunities that we have and it depends on so many other elements in our lives that kind of you know um, if we have the tools to do certain things we will certainly do certain things but some people can coast through life and not do anything with their lives and it could be because they just can't get on the you know the ladder of life some people just can't make it that way you know the mindset don't give them the opportunity to do that so they don't have like opportunities where they can wake up and somebody will say right you know we're doing this today because that helps to motivate people they can just coast through life but maybe their mind isn't in the right place that, that's interesting patricia uh, what you said about coasting through life you know um, we have people that just think all I need to do is to just go through life because you know it's easy. Uh, I don't have to worry about anything. I mean, what 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 do you what do you what do you say to all of that? Uh, yeah, the thing is, people are in different places in their lives, and it's you know if they are they've got the mindset where they're coasting through lives where they don't want to achieve anything in their life, or they don't feel like if they can achieve anything in their lives, it's easy to just kind of just procrastinate and just carry on you know but sometimes it does take a major event like like the covid situation to make people realize that you know actually what's important they might want to achieve those things that they've been sort of like left um you know on the shelves for a while or they might feel like well actually is it really worthwhile what's going to happen to me i don't know what's going on with the world today i mean is it really worth me putting the effort in it just depends on where you are in your life and it depends on what you 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 view as important to you in your yeah. life you know some people don't regard achieving things in their lives as important but you know as far as i know um there must be a reason why you're on the on this in this world and you must be able to achieve something in your life because you, you want to make some kind of impression you know life is about an impression as well so you want to make some kind of impression with your life and you want to make it worthwhile and and, and you know that value to your life um, you know, but then it takes you to the other side of the coin as well, where you find that some people in their lives, like some countries are going through war. They want they want to be out of that. They want to be, you know, um, achieving something in their lives, but they can't because they're stuck in a, in a system where, you know, they fight in civil wars. So it just depends on where you are in your life at any, any given time. It's really, really, it's really that simple. Good yeah, friend you've got of mine once around. said, a good friend of mine once said, just be just mm. be that's what he said to me even stop that chasing I... after, stop being busy yeah stop being being busy yourself and just even, be even with that i i kind of don't agree with that completely well, because i think me. when someone says just be just be what you know exactly. if, you, you think, think about if you've it. been slothful well if if you if the version of you right now is not the right version do you just want to be do you know what I mean? I think no, we need to be decides. kind of careful what, when we say that. Just be. Just be what? Just be whatever it is you are. If you're stop doing all the things you, that you set out to achieve in life. What you are and what you have and what you have Sorry, now. sorry, Pauline, one minute. If, you, if, you, if you're achieving what you've set out in life to achieve, if you're doing your best, if you're giving your best, if you're doing everything that you can, I can say, yeah, just be. But if you're the opposite, you know, I, I agree with Patricia. There is a reason why we're here on earth, yeah? We all need to play a part. If just be is just doing nothing, for example, you know, we all talk about the ozone layer and, you know, and, and all of that. 
if just be is to continually destroy things, that just be is not right. I'm not talking about just be in terms of the world as a whole. I'm talking about it individually. Mm. Yeah, but if your your if your character as an individual is uh, you love confusion, you love um, controversy, mm-hmm. and you're a warrior type. Then that is your that is your destination in life. You're always going to be that. So you're being be you're being you. You have to be what's comfortable to you. Mm. And I think with slothfulness, if people facilitate it, then it's going to happen. Yeah. Today, uh, Sandra, you said you don't agree with uh, people just doing nothing. But if I'm comfortable doing nothing, look at that animal, the sloth. It hangs on a tree for 15 hours. It just rolls round and then turns the other way. And it but only comes, it can stay that busy. Yeah, so Flo, that's, where, just, that's where it comes from. Yeah, but Flo, you just said it, that's the animal. We're not yeah. like the, an, we're not animals. We're, we're, yes, we're we human are. beings that are meant to we be are active. Animals. We are an we active are. Set, of, set of species um, that are meant to be supporting one another. You know, okay. in a community. Okay. Uh, my that. thing is, is that we cannot compare ourselves to an animal that hangs upside down for 15 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Because, I refuse because... to be. <laughs> <laughs> We're no different. But, but the thing is, we sorry to cut in here, but to be the thing is, for the other um, hours of the day, he, that, that poor sloth might be really productive. No, they just sleep. <laughs> <laughs> they just sleep. Let's bring it back to humans. Let's bring it back to humans. But I can describe a lot of humans like that. They get up, (laughs) pick up their benefit, go back and sleep. Yes, that's what they do. And the thing is, that's the deadly sin. To me, that is the sin of being slothful because we know different. Mm. We've grown, we've Mm. got knowledge, we've got awareness, we've got invention, we've got so many things that the animals that hang upside down doesn't have. So (laughs) at the end of the day... (laughs) Sorry, Remy, that made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have knowledge and know-how. You know, that really shouldn't be a life for us. We, we you know, we should kind of maybe aim for a little bit more, you know? <laughs> Just a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> so what you're saying, the solution for this is to set goals for yourself and work towards those goals. How That's if you've got the wherewithal to do that. However small those goals are, I tell you something, this is a goal. Getting up in the morning, cleaning our teeth, and getting dressed is a goal. Goals, I don't mean it has to be quite massive. It doesn't have to be big. It can be quite small to say, I'm going to do this. So you have something to look forward to. Because someone who is slothful seemed to me like they've given up on life. You know, do you know? Do you know? Your point there, Sandra, is um, obviously a very good one. And you, of being an able body, you can achieve these things. If you are, you've had life-changing, you know, physical um, disability in your life, and you can't do those things, and that—that's one of your aims in life. That is a huge thing. And to me, it's almost like we're wasting our lives because there are others who would rather quite gladly take over our lives because they want the things that we freely can do and they can't do. As human beings though, we're never satisfied. Sometimes we're just not absolutely with what we have. You know, absolutely. I think slothless is uh, the thought that is all of lethargy as we said earlier on. Yeah. And that's why some of us make a big difference and some of us make small differences and some of us make no differences at all because we are human and we have choices and those choices can take us in any direction in our lives that we choose to go <laughs> so i think i think the important thing though for me is not to be judgmental um, exactly because because we're all I, I i think we've all said that in different ways that we are all different and uh, we're all cut differently but again i think it's also important to recognize the fact that nobody is an island we're not alone in this world. We're, we're, we're supposed to be in a community. We're put in a community and everyone should be putting their weight within the, the community that they find themselves. And if one person is being lazy out of just sheer 
you know, basically my own mindset is that I'm going to be lazy. I think they are not supporting the community that they live in. That's my view. Uh, others might think differently, might think yeah, they have a right to choose whatever they want to do. But yes, mm -hmm. everyone has a right, definitely. But I think there's also that right to be to be part of something that is uh, encouraging, that is forward looking, that is always there to support and not just take, take, take. Mm. Mm. Well, the heart is a hard thing to change, isn't it? You know, you kind of, uh, you have to find the right, the right impressions on that heart to kind of make you want to change from anything, whether it's good or bad. Um, and so the heart is the one thing that, you know, kind of um, is invaluable in, all, invaluable in all of this. Um, and so, you know, we can we can take sloth, you know, by the definition in which they, they expect it, you know, the expression of laziness, idleness and indulgence. But again, it just depends on where people are in their lives, you know, how they can motivate themselves if they're able to. Um, and what, whether they have, you know, the, the, given the direction to go and that would make the difference in their lives. But again, it's down to choice. Mm -hmm. Willpower. Mm -hmm. Willpower. Yeah. Mm. Motivation. Is, yeah. That is something that we, we take for granted that, you know, everyone has that willpower to mm. want to change their lives or even to want to, to, to live the kind of life they would love to. But sometimes yeah. it's really difficult. It's really challenging. And, and, it, and it's, finding, it's finding that strength, you know, yeah that strength to kind of pull it together and and get the best out of a day sometimes it's, it can be quite difficult uh, and i fully recognize that and i think that's why it's good not to just be by yourself if one is feeling that way to actually reach out to people and say look you know i'm not great i'm not feeling great help me out here and it's just you know talking a lot can help sometimes taking them for 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 walks obviously with with covid right now we're not allowed to meet up in in homes and, and and mix as such you know if they're not in our bubbles and things but you know covid would come is come and it would pass you know so post covid we should be able to get back to what we used to do before which is meeting up with people and friends and and be there for one another yeah <clears throat> Yes, absolutely. And, you know, I think also we need to be mindful how we come across with when we're talking about sloth speak, because it could be that, you know, um, some people may have had a major uh, a major incident in their lives mm. and they, they just can't get from underneath that. I'm not saying that sloth, that could be depression or whatever else might be going on, but it, it kind of helps as well to kind of find whatever it is to motivate you to try and get from underneath that, because it can change your life completely depending on where you are in your life. Absolutely, you know, it, it's, it's, it's trying to find that light at the end of the tunnel, isn't it, really? Trying to find that positive in life and focusing on those things to motivate yourself. Um, yeah. Because it, it, it's, it can be uh, easy sometimes to kind of focus on the, the things that are not going great. And yeah, we all yeah. have those moments in our lives where we just focus on the things that are not going great and that and get fixated on it to the point where it kind of um, disabled us from moving on to do things for ourselves. Mm -hmm. But it's finding those positives and looking back, looking back to good times and remembering those good times. Uh, I, I, I find sometimes it helps me to kind of get up and go when I'm feeling really tired and lazy sometimes I just think wow you know um I've had good times and yeah let, let's let's get up and go again sometimes we're our own worst enemy because some people sometimes I overanalyze something mm. I just look at it look at it look at it and that prohibits me from going forward yes so I think that can be an attribute of sloughness as well. Mm. Yeah, because it can be quite scary, especially when you look at something and, 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 and you look at an issue and it's really massive and mm. it just paralyzes you, you know, because you, you just don't know where to start. 
I often say I use this this analogy quite a lot um, with people I've spoken to in the past about this, where I say, don't look at it, don't look at your issue. It's like looking at a, an elephant. You're trying to eat an elephant, and then of course that you'll be overwhelmed by the size of the elephant. You know, don't look at that. Just look at the toe <coughs> of the elephant, and 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 this is not for obviously vegetarians. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, I need to just say, to say that. Apologies to those vegetarians uh, out there. Um, just take a toe of an elephant and eat it, you know, toe by toe, bit by bit. Mm-hmm. And you soon find, you know, you look back and you think, gosh, I've eaten it. You know, it's because you've kind of removed yourself away from that gigantic elephant animal to looking at it in a very small, minute, you know, um, thing. And, and, and it makes it a lot easier to cope with. Yeah. You know what, sometimes when I've had a really busy week, I might think to myself, you know what, I'm gonna be really slothful this weekend because I, mm. I can't be bothered to do it. I'm tired, I, I can't be bothered. I just need a weekend where I'm not doing anything. And you know, that's just a mild variation of it really. You know, because everyone can be a little bit slothful um, because you know, they just don't want to do anything productive. They just want to take some time for themselves and just to relax and, you know, recharge whatever it is you need to do. Um, and we all do that on some degree. Mm, absolutely. And I think that's acceptable because obviously mm. you need to recharge your batteries as well. You can't mm. keep going. And I think we said it earlier. Uh, you can't keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. You burn out. Mm. You know, if you don't take those, those small moments in time, to kind of relax and re-energize yourself and reflect also, uh, you, you you can easily burn out. So I think I definitely sign up to that. And I do that sometimes, some weekends, you know, where I just I just lie in bed for a long time and, and, and just relax and yeah. Uh, and I wish uh, weekends are three days rather than two days actually sometimes. <laughs> <That would laughs> so be I, could, nice. I could stay longer in bed or something, you know, so. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's all very good. Thank you so much, ladies, uh, once again for all your contributions. And of course, this is a very difficult subject, you know, to, to kind of do justice to. And we know we're not experts. We're just giving our views on various things. So I'd like to just say to our viewers, you know, um, if, you, if there's any topic that you'd like me to cover, please just drop those in uh, the comment section for me. I'd love to hear from you, uh, your experiences and what you feel about the things that we've said today. And don't, don't forget to share this video with your friends and your family and, and to also uh, subscribe to, to this channel where you'd get lots and lots more uh, topics coming your way that we just kind of look at real life issues and real life matters and have a discussion. So um, thank you ladies once again, and I shall see you soon. Thank you. Bye.